Do you have pelvic floor mania? Because the internet has pelvic floor mania right now. As a pelvic floor scientist, this is extremely exciting. However, following the original Mama Sweat blog that where Kara Tom interviewed me on her blog, there has been a huge, almost viral movement of this information, which is fantastic. I've been kind of seeing some of the threads and some of the comments that are coming up, so I wanted to make sure that I clarified a few of the more scientific details for you so that everyone can benefit from this really, really fantastic information. First off, the pelvic floor musculature is a plane of muscles that run between the sacrum here, this movable bone here at the base of your spine, and the pubic symphysis. It's a flat plane of musculature. Now, like all muscles, pelvic floor muscles work exactly the same way, which means when they contract, the ends move towards each other. You understand this pretty easily when you think about your bicep. When you fire your bicep, it moves one bone towards the other. The same goes for your pelvic floor musculature. It can't help itself. The very fact that the muscle is shortening means whatever bones it's pulling on are going to move towards each other. That's what skeletal muscle does. Pelvic floor musculature, because it's attached to the sacrum, the sacrum is able to move into the bony pelvis, which decreases what you call the obstetrical conjugate, the space that if you were birthing the baby would come out. And this obstetrical conjugate has been shown in research to increase the prevalence of pelvic floor disorder. So when I read that, I go from my biomechanical standpoint, well, what would be the musculature that would reduce the forward motion of the sacrum because the thing with muscular properties is the shorter muscle gets the tighter muscle gets and and one of the biggest misnomers is tight muscle is strong muscle tight muscle is actually weak muscle if you see back to this graph that I drew this is a force production versus the length of the sarcomere length of muscle graph so as you can see when you have muscles that's towards the short end, you get low force. And as muscle lengthens, it gets more and more force until you get to this point right here where you max out how much force you can get from a muscle. Now, if I take this graph and I make a bell curve out of it, you can see that the greatest amount of force, which is really more the more appropriate and scientific term for strength, is towards the longer side. Well, if you're contracting and relaxing your bicep all the time, and you're working to get your biceps strong. There's a point at which, if you only work in this up position, you end up having a very, very short, tight, and weak muscle as compared to it being lengthened back out. But how do you lengthen out the pelvic floor? That is really the most important piece. That's where pelvic floor strength comes from. Your gluteal muscles, the muscles attached to the back of the sacrum, should always be going. They should always be going. But what do we do? We sit all day. Maybe you are told to tuck your pelvis and you sit on your sacrum all day. So as you let the backside go, over the long haul, your sacrum ends up moving inward. So what happens is you get a little um, pee sneeze, laugh sneeze, whatever. So you're leaking a little bit. So you start to tighten up the muscles and that works. The, the literature or the research shows that a Kegel will work because in the short term, it will tighten everything up. But eventually, and all of you out there who've been Kegeling your whole entire lives practically and are still experiencing prolapse, that Kegel over a long term pulls the sacrum inward so that you get yourself to the point where the pelvic floor is so bunched up, it can no longer generate force. Even though you're sending a signal here, it can't do anything with it. So now you have a neuromuscular problem. It's not really, nothing's broken, it's just tight. So if you don't have glutes, you can't have a strong pelvic floor. The Kegel isn't bad, and thank goodness for the Kegel because when Dr. Kegel invented it, he saved thousands, hundreds of thousands of women from surgery, which clued us into, hey, the down erosion of your organs is some, something that should be opposed by a muscle. However, now that all of you are out there training that muscle kind of excessively and probably not spending the same amount of time strengthening the backside, you end up with a hypertonic pelvic floor. So a cable works in the short time in research, but on the long, long term, it's not going to give you the benefit that you need if you're neglecting your gluteal muscles. So if you're experiencing pelvic floor disorder now, your primary objective should we get in a little booty back here, all right? 
Hope this explains a little bit more. I'll blog just a little bit more information and keep the questions coming. I want you to be well and I'm willing to give you as much information as it takes. Thanks.